Hello everyone. So uh, in today's lab tutorial, I'm going to repeat the same lab manual, uh, the same stuff that we repeated during the lab session that happened, was held today. So let's start with the simple circuit. Um, we will be studying about the dependent voltage source again a little bit in detail. We'll build the circuit and then we'll also talk about the uh, current dependent voltage source. <clears throat> then finally, I'll also talk about the uh, the voltage sweep, the DC sweep, as well as the parameter parametric sweep uh, of, a, of an element of a circuit. So let's start with the circuit. Uh, a very simple one. I'll take a resistor over here. I have a voltage source. Okay, and then. I'll bring an E. Okay. So as I explained earlier, uh, we have um, we have this. These two ports are, can can be called as sensing ports. So these are the ports that sense the voltage at uh, at a independent voltage source, and then that voltage get amplified and is transferred to a load. Right now, assuming that R is our load, I'll do a type of circuit as uh, okay. This one now, this is the sensing component of the of the voltage dependent voltage source. So, this is kind of sensor, it, it senses the voltage. So, this sensor would senses the voltage whatever is uh, available here and then it gets amplified with, it, with a factor which we define here for example i would define a factor of five and the independent voltage source buys me a volt of one volt only or oh, let's make it two so it, it gives us two, volt, two volts and then this two volt gets sensed by these two terminals and so the two uh, two volts develop here which gets multiplied by, by, by the five and is then provided to the resistor r so let me check the resistor r as one mega ohm i'll bring the grounds here so let me bring a ground here and here f3 connect the wires so it's a good practice to put the two grounds otherwise as we uh, start discussing the other voltage sources uh, our um, our LD spars would start giving us the problem. It will say that uh, there is a floating uh, floating circuitry in the <clears throat> in your circuit. Just to avoid that, we have to do those things. We have to provide two grounds. Now, if we run the simulation, um, no. Let me label the. So it's V in, V in goes in here, and then V out. Okay, and now we can run simulation. Stop time uh, for DC operating point simulation. Okay, and the uh, voltages and currents will pop up so you see my vn is 2 volt as you see here vn is 2 volt and the v out is 10 volts so this 2 volt gets sense here and it, and it gets multiplied with the 5 with our multiplier and then the 10 volt appears across the resistor the load resistor all right this this is voltage dependent voltage source if we're looking for the voltage dependent current source then we have to get G. G is voltage dependent current source. Same circuit, nothing complex. It works in exactly the same manner. Uh, F7, I'll bring it here. It senses the voltage here, and whatever is the voltage gets multiplied with the multiplier. So I'll, I'll take, take it as 8. So it means for the 2 volts, Eight ampere of current appears across the terminals of this 
<coughs> voltage dependent current source. Here it is. So V in is two volts, V out is whatever. Current resistance R R1 is 16. So that's the current because it's a series circuit. So whatever is the current developed here will be will be will have to pass through this resistance. So we have 16 ampere of the current uh, available and the current through the G1 is also 16. That's how the voltage dependent. Uh, current source works. All right, we're done with that. Now let's uh, let's do the parametric simulation. Let me quickly save this file as um, circuit volt dependent I source. Okay. <clears throat> I'll close this. I'm going to open the new the schematic. So very simple circuit. I'll take a resistor. I'll take a voltage supply. F3. Okay. All right. So simple voltage, and then I'll bring the ground here, and ground will be. Connected. So imagine we have an ohm of a resistor, and for the voltage supply, we would like to sweep. We would like to DC sweep. I'll I'll give it a value, a zero value, doesn't matter. Now when I run the simulation command, I'll go to the DC sweep. A DC sweep means that I would like uh, the the. I mean, if I have different voltage ratings and i would like to test my working circuitry for all those test voltages so instead of uh, cha changing the voltage manually each and every time i can give those values here and this and simulation software will take care of it it will keep on incrementing the voltage source uh, it will sweep the voltage source through different points and will give you the the corresponding current uh, and the across the resistor rating uh, current through the resistor rating so it's asking me the name of source to sweep so name of source is v1 as you see here uh, the type of sweep is linear we have octave decade and list within the list we can provide the the different voltage numbers that we would like to sweep with here i'm saying the my start value is zero volt stop value is 10 volt sweep for 10 volt with an increment of uh, 1 volt that's wonderful i'll put it here okay mm. it's a little bit bigger okay simulation is running so i'll see the voltage here okay <clears throat> as you see it starts from zero and we have got a linear line so it's uh, it's being incremented at the uh, at an increment rate of one volt, uh, each and at each and every iteration passes through the uh, developed across resistor R, and then the current is passing through the, through R. So if I see R, we see it's starting from zero, starting zero and reaches one ampere uh, with different voltage ratings. So actually, this is nothing but Ohm's law. We are what we are doing here essentially is proving the Ohm's law, where voltage is directly uh, proportional to the current, keeping the when the resistance is constant. That's what we are doing here. <clears throat> so Ohm's law, this is plain Ohm's law. Now this is one way where we do the DC sweep. Now if we are re required to to perform a parametric simulation, where, for example, for a given circuit, somebody asks us as a designer. Uh, to change the R values and see the behavior of the circuit. And if we have a more complex circuit with resistors and uh, inductors and capacitor in it, and, so, and we are asked to simulate the circuit for the different values of the parameters, how we will proceed there then. So the, the way to do it is this. So I'll go with R, I'll change the resistance R into curly braces 
uh, and I'll designate a parameter name to so say register. And that's my parameter name register within the curly braces. And once done that, I'm going to set the spice directive. I'll say dot step and then the parameter, the name of the parameter is resistor or res and I'll put it put res. And I would like to simulate it starting 0 0.5 ohm uh, up to 4 ohm with an increment of 0 0.5 ohm. Okay, so that's that's what my uh, parameter looks like. So I'm asking it to step it between to step the resistor R resistor parameter starting 0 0.5 ohm until 4 ohm with an increment of 0 0.5 ohm. Once it's done, I'll simulate and there you there you see. Now what, what the software is doing here, uh, I think Spice is doing here, it takes the first voltage value which is 0 volt for example and then sweeps the uh, sweeps all the resistor values starting 0 0.5 ohm to 4 ohm and plots the circuit. So it is actually proving the ohm's law or uh, uh, drawing the ohm's law uh, plot for us uh, at different values of R. So then it goes, it changes the value of voltage to next rating, which is one, one volt, and then sweep all the parameter values for that one volt and then two volt and all our values and we get the ohm's law um, depiction here that's how that's all about our lab if we have to <clears throat> if we are asked to input the voltage source which is a sinusoidal the way to do it is do is that you take the same dc voltage source and you right click it and you go to advanced and within advanced, we have different ways to define our sinusoidal voltage. So we can take the sine wave, DC offset, we can, we can leave empty for amplitude. I can say that for 5 volt, I need the 5 volt uh, amplitude. The frequency should be 100 hertz, for example. I leave it 100. Time delay, we don't care. Theta, we don't care. Phi, we don't care. So everything else is is not so much important for us. And if I say, okay, then actually I'll have my sinusoidal wave here. <clears throat> and yeah, I mean, that's how the, uh, the def how defining of the sinusoidal voltage will take place. I hope uh, you will be able to, um, to work on your lab assignments based on these circuits. Have a good day. Bye-bye.